Hi guys! Last week we worked together and we drew some elephants. Here's mine that I've sketched out really quickly. Um, and today I'm going to show you how to add texture to your elephant. Now elephants of course are wrinkly and you can just color them solid gray but then they're going to appear to be smooth and we want to give our elephant a really wrinkly old texture. So I have my paper and I also have a scrap piece of paper. This is just a picture I don't need anymore. So I'm going to take my paper and crinkle it up. The scrap, please don't crinkle up your elephant. Okay, Make sure it's nice and crinkly. Unfold it. Looking good. Crinkle it again. Really get your frustrations out on that paper. Oh yeah. Good and crinkled. Then unroll it a last time. Now it should be really crinkly. You'll want to flatten it out as much as you can. Smooth it. Okay, and now I have this really wrinkly piece of paper. I'm very excited to use this as my texture, and we're going to do texture rubbing. So I also need to get a crayon. I got a gray crayon and I peeled off about half of it. You could peel off the whole crayon, but I actually want a little bit more control. So that's why I've peeled off about half of it. And I'm going to be forming an edge that I can use and reuse on this crayon. Now, once you have your paper, you're going to put it underneath your elephant, put the elephant on top and flatten them down together. Make sure the elephant is facing you and go ahead and use the pencil, the crayon, the side of your crayon to color inside your elephant. Go ahead and overlap with the full elephant. We can color his eyes in black later. Fill in all those spaces. Go a little slower when you're around the edges. I'm moving my paper so that I can get the colors and spaces that I want. And when you get to a part that's a little too hard to do with this technique of rubbing, then just wait and leave that for later. Come down along those legs, fill in the feet. Okay. And I'm going over it one more time and pushing a little bit harder with my paper still in place. That's important. Don't move the paper because I want my elephant to be a little bit darker. Okay. Oh, looking cool. Now I'm going to take my um, edge of my crayon and fill in the other places. Now you can go ahead and um, color on the sides, but notice I'm not even pushing that hard and the color's already showing up a lot darker. That's why it's important to push as hard as you can when you're doing your texture rubbing because the texture rubbing will always be a little bit lighter than just regular coloring. Oh, that is really cool. Take a look at that texture, guys. Now I'm ready to pick other colors or even other tools. I could use colored pencils if I want to do the background. Um, I could use crayons if I want to do the background. I have crayons on hand, so that's probably what I'll use. I'll probably end up fill in, finishing my elephant with crayons. And I'm gonna get black to do the eyes. And I'm going to do the tail in black as well. 
Okay. Now, if I wanted to, if I wasn't happy with the gray of my elephant, I could put my texture paper back underneath, but the wrinkles might start to overlap in a way that you don't like anymore. So, you determine what works best for you and your elephant. Finish coloring not just your elephant, but your background, your sky, and your ground as grass as well. And why do I have stuff sticking out? and definitely show me your finished projects. Have fun fourth grade.